Well, how do that jumps design, Captain of the Steves, and it's a cup of tea with Captain Steve episode, people. Heck yes, it is. An English brew, heck yes. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a lore deep dive for the Singularity Expedition for No Man's Sky and what I feel it might mean. I mean, this is all just my own ideas and things like that and things that I've been placing together. Uh, yeah, I'll put all links inside of the video descriptions for credits and sources and all that sort of shenanigans, so be sure to check that one out. Anyway, let's get started with this. So this is Expedition 10, but this is part two of some sort of ARG arc that Hello Games is putting into iteration. So let's jump on over into game first and let's just sort of approach the biggest elephant in the room, which is this giant red freaking marble here, the Atlas, that we have to go and see five times. So five times is quite important in a roundabout way because we get given five wave files. Now, as we're learning the Atlas words and things, you would think that the Atlas will at least speak to us. But it doesn't. It doesn't actually speak to us. Inside of the game lore, the text reads that you can hear sounds that fill the whole universe. So it's a little bit ominous, isn't it? But what are those sounds? Did you turn your volume up? Did you hear those sounds? Now, I've got a sound wave of all five of those sounds put together, but I'm just going to play you a small snippet. And on the screen, I'm going to put you the translation of what all five of them sound like. So here you go. Hold on to your eardrums. So anyway, that goes on for nearly twice as long as that, but I did put up all the words of what it means. So she sees through their eyes. Okay. Whose eyes does she see through? Okay, well, there's two different choices that we get given inside of this expedition over in phase five. You can either choose the Atlantid head or you can choose the Crimson. Now, the Crimson head is that of the Atlas. So when you choose, like, the, the Crimson parts or whatever, it's always in red when you talk to the actual phage, phage robot on the Nexus. We'll get to that guy later. However, anything to do with the Atlantid is always in purple. So I think the Void Mother and the Void or the Abyss or, or whatever you want to call it, the Realm of Glass, because even that is suggested to be the same place in some of this actual text, and also, there's another bit of text. But anyway, what do I think the Void Mother means by she sees through their eyes? I think she's seeing through the Atlantid's eyes. I think this head that we're wearing right now is linked to the Atlantid and the Void Mother, or the Realm of Glass, and I think she's seeing through their eyes. I think this sort of setup of this sort of robot Machia that we've got here, this avatar, is sort of puppeteered almost by like the Void Mother, or she's along for the ride with us at least, and just seeing and observing through their eyes. In a similar sort of way, as when we're doing the Atlas path, we're doing the Atlas bidding, we're actually following this giant freaking red marble. I mean, it doesn't look like a good guy anyway, does it? You know? So maybe they're not good, they're not bad. Both of these entities could be as good as they are malevolent. I mean, as we uncover sort of text and lore from the actual Atlantids, from the actual balls that we get in space, you know, those weird sort of things that sort of like convulse and move around. In fact, let's jump on over to that and I'll show you what I mean there, people. So let's just get rid of the game image for a moment and let's jump on over to my old laptop. So those weird sort of cube things in space, those hexagony things that all rotates on that, they give hex code. And when the hex code is translated, you can see on the screen now when I move myself in a moment and hit play, that they actually spell out something too. Whole phrases of lore. So let's jump into this, people. Let's take me off the screen for a moment. Chicka boom. And let's hit play to this. Chicka pow. Void Prime, the whole world burned. You will never see your home again. We are a lifeboat. Autopilot yacht. Meeting destination. In the terror years. Evacuation failed. Lifeboats lost. All converted. 
out of nothing, she will rebuild us. Life is never extinguished. The data remains. The will remains. A new unplanted is coming. We do not need you. What is a shell? But a vessel. Of silicon glass or metal. A crystal. A planet. They awaken from the void. They all awaken in response. In unison. Against deletion. Our own. Own convergence. Okay, so that's pretty ominous stuff, isn't it? All of that, people. But there's also that strange spider robot that we build up inside of the actual Nexus and breathe into life that I call Man Spider. Let's just jump back on over into game for a second. I'll show you which little doohickey I'm on about. This little chap over here, this guy. Yep, so let's, let's go and interact with him. Bum, 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 bum. Strange, as she calls him e Exporter Ruggerthroth. I don't know whether that's the same for everybody, but pretty darn cool, isn't it? Lost others, hunger lost, others look for her. Lost others seek to be three. And you see there it's in purple text. Now the purple text I think is linked to the void, the abyss, the realm of glass, and the void mother. Anything in red is usually the crimson, or it's to do with the Aerons or the Sentinels, or the Atlas. Now the Aerons and the Sentinels were created to protect the Atlas and protect the worlds and the simulation. We all know that they went a little bit crazy, and we are now seeing corrupted ones appearing. And is that thanks to the Void and the, and the um, Void Mother, perhaps? Anyways, that's an interesting conundry, and it's that robot there that gives you the choice of these two sort of arcs towards the end. And I'm wondering whether these two arcs at the end, the Crimson or the Atlantid, might result in some sort of factions in future. But let us know what you think inside of the actual comments. It'd be nice to hear what you, your, what your thoughts and feelings are. At very least, though, I think that they might be that they, we might get different story arcs, you know, different leanings in different directions inside of the story and lore in part three, perhaps. But going on to the Sentinels and the um, Atlantid and the realm, realm of Glass and the Void and all that sort of stuff, you can see here one of the rewards that I got was Purple Jet Pack Trails for my actual um, character. We also got Crimson Freighter Trails for our freighter. So we got given a Crimson item and we got given a Corrupted Purple item. So we've got a balance going on there, people. Now, for the ships ourselves, we've just been given the Sentinel Interceptor ships, and being Sentinelized and Aeron, you know, they're kind of like the red type of ship in a roundabout way. But we also have another type of ship, which is the living ship, which is organic and fleshy type looking, which could be from the Void. So, you know, the living ships could be the Void Mothers type of ships, whereas these Sentinelized ships are red. You know, their, their ship trails are red as well, and uh, yeah, they're Aeron, so red in nature. So we've also got that ship. We've also got that ship split, if you like. That's hard to say without saying a rude word. <laughs> anyway, people, have another quick sip of my tea, and then we're going to be moving on to some more lore, people. So let's just let's jump on over. It's a lovely cup of tea, that, people, inside the view of us. I'm going to be jumping back over to PC in a moment. And there's a snazzy little website that gives sort of like an, an overview of everything that's going on at law based and ARG based in a very easy to digest and read sort of um, synopsis. Anyway, I'll jump over and I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. So if I take myself off the screen for a second, uh, the wrong button, take me off. Actually, I could leave myself on maybe. We'll see. Actually, I am covering a little bit of the screen there, aren't I? So let's get rid of me as well. There we go. So, 
looking at this if I can scroll in a little bit I might be able to make it a little bit bigger text wise there we go so here we go so this has actually been put together by Codex Re rebooting over on Twitter I put links to all of this inside the video description but I really like this because it keeps everything in one easy to read place so on the actual milestones you've got this little bit of code that's at the bottom uh, at, at the edge of here okay so how do we go back back maybe not that one. cool and when you translate it it comes up we do not need you and also another one that mentions glass okay which is kind of important now whenever you go to like the back of like uh, uh, a station at the moment and hit up the station core it says glass 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 and a lot of it's in purple okay so scrolling down the codex message in the expedition monoliths spells out our own virgins which, yeah, here you go. This is the actual messages here, our own virgins. A lot of this was inside of all of that stuff that I put up earlier with all this sort of strange voice that I did and all that too. These though, however, are from the echoes that we've been putting into this consciousness housing. And they've got this other string of hex code, which isn't in what I've delivered earlier on. So this is fairly new and we've been uncovering them as we go. So tiers one, two, three and four, well zero, so five again. And I can only imagine that these bits of text are what these shells, these entities, these echoes are bringing with them. So what is this place? Perhaps meaning our own dimension, perhaps even meaning the Nexus, or even the thing that we've been feeding them into, you know, where we housed um, Artemis that time. Why are we here? We long to return. We rebuild ourselves. Okay. Fire and disconnection would not stop us she will find us it is told okay so there's a few statements in here which are a little unusual so the whole thing of we will rebuild ourselves the other sort of text that we find in those hexagons floating around in space is they say she will rebuild us so there's a bit of a, a bit of a conflict there in the two different terms but i don't think all that really matters and when it says fire and disconnection would not stop us well we all know that their weld burned but what was their weld well there's mentions of void prime so as we follow, we go down a little bit further what is this place multiple mentions of glass and then mentions of void prime okay so void prime where is Void Prime? What is Void Prime? I think Void Prime might be their home world that burned. You know, the whole world burned and that they sort of like went off into space as life rafts trying to get away. But for whatever reason, their autopilot failed as well. And I have no idea where they went to, perhaps the realm of glass, uh, where they've just become consciousness separated from body. And now we're putting this consciousness into body. Now, Void Prime... I think when Corvax Prime got destroyed, the Void Mother was born, and at the same time, I think Void Prime was born. So perhaps the destruction of that planet caused a rift so big, it created a different version of Corvax Prime as Void Prime. And I think what we're hearing, these echoes, these sort of... It's all about melody. It's all about sound. It's like even when we found our living ship, that was all about melody and following sound to find our living ship. And even with like, you know, bringing in the actual living frigate Leviathans, that was all about sound as well, wasn't it? So, and, and we're getting sounds all the time here too, even when bringing in these new shells. So even though the consciousness might have been some sort of organic construct, I don't think what we're seeing now with these sort of like cybernetic shells that we're putting these, these sort of things into, it, that might not be how they originally looked. They might have looked more sinister, a little bit more like, you know, like the living frigates, like the living ships, like the monstrosities that we see. That might have been their original look. And the consciousness that we're now rebuilding, we're putting into these cybernetic shells of sorts, I guess. Okay, right, so there's lots of other bits of stuff here saying we, we, we build our own. Now, every time that there's something new found by the communities, 
all different communities around the verse it's being it's being placed into here so if you want to keep up with all this sort of stuff hit up this link inside of the video description and if you want to build your own theories on all of this because this is just my theory this isn't confirmed it isn't legit and who knows parts three and four might change my paradigm on how I feel about all of this. This is how I feel in part two, because part one has already happened with the whole, you know, the interceptor and stuff like that. And we got a little bit of lore there with, um, you know, she sees, I, I see her and uh, the void mother. Anyways, we will never see home again. Out of nothing, she will rebuild us. This is all the stuff that you get from these big hexagony type things in space that I mentioned earlier, and the sound wave that I played you earlier on. And you know, this is the actual way that they've put it together. We will never see home again. Out of nothing, she will rebuild us. Life is never extinguished. The data remains. They, the will remains. A new Atlantid is coming. We are a lifeboat, autopilot locked, reaching destination in airy years. Evacuation failed, lifeboats lost, all converted. The whole world burned. So I think they all got converted into some sort of data stream, like an upload of consciousness. And now we have put that consciousness into temporary shelves, and it might not be their final resting place, is where I, what I'm thinking with this. It's just a temporary sort of thing. The previous found audio files now active in game can be heard when you resonate seeds that are gained during the expedition. Exactly. And they spell out she sees through their eyes. So I've kind of done this in a roundabout a backwards way. You've seen all the juicy bits. These are all the little bits that hang off of that. But I think the void mother is definitely something that's going to be coming into iteration at some point, people. Um, perhaps towards the end of this part four arc. So yeah, hopefully we're going to see more coming into this actual website so yeah like i say all links will be inside of the video description people now on planets i actually think that we see remnants of these lifeboats these rafts that they were in now look at that there's a giant worm that just jumped out the ground see now that's part of the void and realm of glass and part of the corruption that's spinning into our universe i think and as well as these infested planets people so i think this is all signs of the void creep and the void mother coming into iteration but i also think that these here they, they look like ejected space station cores so if i go into camera mode go up here for a second so this thing it looks like it's been slammed down into the planet in this direction bang because all the debris goes out this way you know so it looks like it's a crash landed sort of i don't know life raft escape pod whatever you want to freaking call it and then over here you've got this little chappy in bits inside of here and it looks like they've sent out some sort of distress beacon you've got this sort of screen here that flashes and you've got an autophage here the things that we've rebuilt but i think that these were just sort of like little life pods and something just to house the actual consciousness and perhaps that's why they're broken down and become the way that they are like in pieces that we see here this sort of like warning beacony type thing as you can see it's flashing red it's of the crimson perhaps it was something that was sent out to the atlas to try and help them i really don't freaking know i don't know what's going on there with this red flashing warning sign i have done a video just on the warning signs found inside a game i'll put a link up there because there's some interesting nuggets of lore inside of that and some strange sort of like crazy ideas around what these might mean but anyway i don't want to go off too much on a tangent on those because i want to keep this very much aligned to the arg and stuff that we're seeing inside of these expeditions so yeah i think this is an actual physical representation of that lifeboat and of it failing and of them crash landing and becoming sort of like you know stranded sort of remnants of what they once were and inside of this expedition we've been slowly rebuilding and finding out what's going on there but this here looks very much like a station core from our current space stations now in abandoned space stations we don't have these so could it be that they ejected from the abandoned space stations went into uh, civilized space crash landed but found no help i really don't know yeah interesting sort of synopsis going on there anyway let's go on up to the um, space station and i'll show you what i mean with the space station cores Okay, so there's a space station core right there, and you can see this all plugged in with all the cables and all that sort of stuff. But imagine if this is an escape pod sitting right there inside of that station core right now. Might be a little sentinel chappy. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a nice thought, isn't it? Or is it? I don't know. And why? Why is it plugged into a space station? 
did the actual races enslave the sort of you know those little things in the back of the space station and for what reason you know it's an interesting one isn't it anyway let's go and hit on up this space station core chikapow live support systems stable commercial monitoring online flight path management 80 4% functional at this air on surveillance uplink functional and it's inside of purple text so does that mean that the air atlas air on surveillance of the void of glass is operational inside of this system is that why perhaps we see more infested planets and systems that are uncharted even though we have seen them creeping now into our own systems. But abandoned systems have got that sort of slime all over the freaking place. So it does make me wonder if the Aerons are combating the realm of glass in some way, shape or form. Anyway, we're going to import a station code override and this is where you get counterfeit code detected. Access denied in red, which is a sentinel thing. Then you've got glass, glass in purple, glass, glass, glass and two in blue. But glass in purple, again, it's almost like, well, you're trying to override the station core and then it says, you know, sentinel in red. And then glass in purple. I think the purple and red has got quite a lot to do with this and it all ties in. And I think the glass, glass, glass is a warning of the realm of glass and the void that's held behind it or the, the abyss, you know, and it's all one in the same sort of place is what I'm thinking now, people. I used to think maybe the void and the abyss might be separate places in the realm of glass, but now I'm kind of seeing them as all one and the same thing. So yeah, as I said, my paradigm and the way that I think about things will shift. I'm not one of these people that would bang the drum until, you know, I change my thoughts and feelings. As things go on, I evolve with them. If there's evidence there, I will follow the evidence. I've got quite an analytical mind, I think, people. So yeah, I'm not going to sound off on things that I don't feel are true anymore. And I honestly don't think the abyss, the realm of glass and the void are three separate places. I think they're all one in the same place. I think the I think glass is what separates them. Some sort of glass barrier in a roundabout way, or that's the terminology that they're using. And behind that is, is the void. Or, or the abyss is one place okay and i think that's where the void mother um lies and i think in places the void creep has been creeping through that realm of glass and fracturing into our own dimension yeah and that's probably why we see boundary failures on exotic planets and things and weirdness going on and this void creep giant worms all that sort of shenanigans i think is down to the void mother these shells that we're seeing right now i think it's just temporary housing i don't know whether they've always looked that way um however they're starting to look that way now um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what I've got with this. What do I think they may have looked like before? Well, up here sometimes you get fallen travellers. And they look a little bit like us, as sort of like entities in a roundabout way, apart from they're all shimmery and shiny. You know the, the ones I mean. I think they could be probably what they looked like before, like fallen travellers. They always warn of not drinking of the water, and there's some purple text that goes on there, and links to the void, and talking of an alternate realm. Yeah, so if you want to see all of that traveller lore, hit that up, which could be up there. But another possible is we did get given a um, weird visage by this chappy over here. In fact, I could have gone to the appearance modifier and actually showed it on my person. So if I go to purchase old scrap, further down here you get all these Halloween-y type things. And there's a horrific flesh helmet. In fact, yeah, let's go Let's go see if I can put it on. I think I've got it on. There we go. Save. That's it there. The horrific flesh helm. So yeah, I'm wondering whether this is what the entities look like from the realm of glass and inside of the void. However, we're just getting their consciousness right now. You know, they all work on harmonics and notes and sound waves and stuff like that. And I honestly think that we're just giving them temporary shelves at the moment. So there we go, people. That's my working theory anyway. I mean, it could be the Fallen Travellers. It could be those guys. It could be something completely new. Or it could be these constructs that we're building now, these robotic constructs, are just like the Void's version of Sentinels in the roundabout way that we're seeing corrupted Sentinels on planets. It could be something completely different than what we've seen so far. Inside of the game files, there is one other thing that's been dug up and found. Now, there is an actual YouTube channel. I'll go and find it by the structure and he's managed to put these into the actual game as NPCs on his settlement. So I'll go and show you his video quickly. One second, people. Well, so little Mundo, right, well, I've muted this. I'm just going to hit play, and uh, you're going to see this chap over here. So inside of the game files, there's actually one that's like robot NPC, and you can see here he's replaced them all on his actual um, 
a settlement, which is quite cool. And it looks just like the ones that we've unlocked, complete with jetpack. Um, but they've also got like this giant tridenty type looking spear in their hands that isn't textured right now. So maybe that's just a placeholder for something to come. But you can see here they're quite beautifully animated and they do seem to have the elanted head. Which is a little odd, isn't it? Greetings Overseer, all in purple text. I don't know whether... I mean, they've been put in through a save edit, so I don't really know whether we can read too much into the fact that it's given purple text for this NPC, but maybe. Who freaking knows? But this has been found inside the game files. You can see that they've got completely different armor to what we've got. Looks quite sort of in keeping, perhaps, even with what Artemis was wearing. It looks kind of retro. It doesn't look too futuristic. And again, with the pole as well. I was hoping to see multi swords, but no, it's got some sort of weird spear type thing. So anyway, thank you to the structure. I'll put video links inside of the video description so you can go check this video out in full and see what the structure has to say on this. Now, I do like the structure. The structure has done a little bit of sort of lore speculation and other bits and bobs and deep dives as well. So yeah, really liking their channel. Check their channel out. Give them a subscribe if you like what you see. Anyway, people, I think that's pretty much everything I've got on the lore deep dive. And I hope you've got more that you want to sound off on and add to. So if you have, please put it in the video description. I mean, the video comments area. Put it in the video comments area. You can't do anything with the description. That's my bad. But yeah, go check out the video description because there's a lot of links there to stuff, all the source materials. Anyway, salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.